Hi, everybody. I'm John Stinson from the Eastern Board of Education. And I'm Chris Parkin from the Reading Board of Education. And hi, I'm Todd Johnson from the Region 9 Board of Education. And I'm Rydell Harrison, Superintendent of Schools, and this is Between Three Chairs. Uh, so since the last time that we had an opportunity to speak with you, we have now shifted into remote learning or distance learning for all of our schools. Uh, as you know, this was a tough decision, but it was the right decision in order to maintain the health of our students and our staff, and also to respond to the challenges that we were having related to staffing with the high numbers of teachers and students that we had in quarantine. Uh, as we're heading into this, uh, this time of distance learning through Friday, December 4th, um, please remember to keep us notified as a school district. If your child uh, becomes sick or tests positive, it's really important for us to just continue with our contact tracing process and to maintain um, really clear and current data on the health of our community. So uh, I thank you in advance for doing that. And I wanna say just a huge thank you to all of our parents for their flexibility and all of our teachers in particular for their flexibility. They of course have been working tirelessly behind the scenes in preparation and then in also throughout this shift to make sure that we're keeping students first. Today, we are excited to have Clarence Zachary, who is our brand new Director of Finance and Operations with us in uh, uh, Between Three Chairs, and he is on day five, uh, so we're excited to hear from him. Thank you, Dr. Harrison. We're glad to be here. Hey, Clarence, and uh, welcome to ER9. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you during the process before you came on board and we're happy to have you here. And I would hope you could tell the community a little bit about your student-centered approach and the lens through which you see your role as Director of Finance and Operations. Okay, Chris, uh, my approach is basically the sort of a first um, question I asked, what's in the best interest of the kids? And every decision we make, it's how does this help the children of Easton, Reading and Region 9 achieve their educational goals? So whatever decisions made, whether it be budget or operational, that's the sort of primary question. If it doesn't advance those issues of educational uh, advancement for our kids, then we have to assess whether we should be making that choice that, that before us. So it, it, the first question is always, how does this help the kids achieve their educational goal? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really interested. I know you've had a lot of experience in sort of small districts with the sort of small staff. You've, your most recent experiences in a very large district uh, with a ton of staff, as you think about sort of being able to deliver on what, what you just talked about, sort of doing the thing that is in the best interest of the student first, how do you translate that sort of movement from a large district to a sort of a set of three small districts like ours? Well, John, typically in a large district, you have layers of systems and staff to, to manage those systems. Uh, in a smaller district or tri districts, you have to sort of really rely on technology to get done some of the things you otherwise would use staff to do in the larger district. So what we look and do here in ER9 is assess our system, our, our technology platforms, uh, try to get them standardized as best we can, and then uh, roll those out to be more efficient at, on, from an operational level. And hopefully that frees up people's time to do, do more analysis and more uh, things focused on the kids versus mundane tasks. That's great. And I know you've only been with us a, a few days so far and, and still uh, getting to know everyone and, and learning how things are being done here. But I, I would be curious if you wouldn't mind sharing, what are some of the things you plan to do in the next 90 days or try to accomplish in the next 90 days here? Well, Todd, based on the, uh, the existing uh, budget schedule, we'll have to get uh, Easton and Reading's budget done in the next 90 days. Uh, I hope to do uh, an assessment of the security of the schools um, hope to also have an assessment of the physical plant of the schools, uh, create a list of items that I think need to be addressed. Also try to get some standardization amongst the both operations of facilities and of IT through the three districts. Right now we have sort of three separate sort of silos going on and they're not, they're not uniform. Uh, I'd like to see some uh, them be uniform, get more efficiencies. We have some operational things here within central office that we need to work on. We have a new um, finance and HR platform we're trying to roll out that's going to go live January 1. So we got to make sure that gets off smoothly and then just get through the budget season for both ER, East and Reading, then Region 9, catch our breath, sort of reassess what we've done and then sort of get planned ready for the next year coming up. And of course, we will continue to deal with COVID as, it, as we 
as things pop up. So Clarence, I'm, I'm so appreciative of you uh, not just being here with us today, but just being uh, in this uh, in our district and uh, helping to lead this work forward. And as we head into this season of Thanksgiving, uh, you know, I just want to take a moment, uh, particularly with COVID being on everyone's minds. Uh, it's been an opportunity, I think, for many of us to just take a moment and reflect on all of the things that we, we can be thankful for. And of course, I'm so grateful for all of our students uh, and the, the ways that they come in with their passions uh, to learn and excitement for learning and their level of re resiliency whether it is learning in person or learning remotely. Uh, I'm just really proud of uh, our students hanging in there and really um, maintaining their love of learning and, um, and investing in their own growth as students. I'm also really thankful for our families and their partnerships. These partnerships are especially um, important right now uh, while we are in these uh, changing models. Uh, and, um, and, and, and I think on behalf of our staff, that uh, we are just really grateful to be able to work with you in uh, supporting your students at home. Uh, and with that, I'm uh, really thankful for our staff and um, their work with our students and keeping our students uh, first and at the center of all of our decision making and then their willingness to work collaboratively. And on behalf of everyone on, on, uh, in, in this call or on this video, uh, I wanna say that we are all really grateful for uh, the opportunity that this community has given us to, to act as leaders, to work and advocate on behalf of our students and our communities. Uh, and that is just something that uh, we never take for granted. And um, I appreciate your confidence in me as our superintendent uh, and the, the ways that you support uh, our teachers and all of our students through our Board of Education. So thanks, hope that you guys have a wonderful and safe uh, uh, holiday break. Take care.